Let's start off 2022 with a bang. This video, originally, I had about six or seven things I wanted to get into, and I probably could have made about four or five separate videos, but I started using this, and it's so much fun. It is very, very good. It's nuts. It's deadly. And I have one more video coming up with a similar concept later on in the week, and I hope that you like this one. There's a ton of cool things you can do. You can use any weapons that you want, and I'm going to show a very basic build, but after that, you can start putting in your personal choices. As you saw in the thumbnail, this video starts with the Peregrine Greaves. You heard correctly, the Flying Tiger Knee is back, and you wouldn't think so, but this now needs to be respected. This build is an accumulation of things that we know, things that we forgot, things that get no play. And this is also, straight up, dead serious. It is one of the most deadliest builds I have ever played with, and it's also one of the most complete all-around builds I've ever used. Crazy synergy. The Paragon Greaves, all shorter charge abilities, Seismic Strike, Hammer Strike, and Shield Bash deal bonus damage when activated from the air, so it one-shots. To pair with this, they nerfed, but big buffed the shoulder charge as a whole. If you haven't played with it yet, these are like better than Destiny 1 now. So the shoulder charge abilities, sprint activation time reduced from a second and a half to 1.25 seconds, increased targeting range from 5.5 to 6.8 meters, lunge range increased from 5.5 to 6.8 meters. The targeting cone width was increased by about 10%. Now suppresses victim's melee lunge for one second on a hit, increased PvE damage by 25%, but they reduced the damage versus players. It can no longer one-shot. It's actually a buff. Incredible movement now, but it no longer one-shots a player until you put on the Greaves. This alone has been a blast. In a single gaming session, what you're seeing, this is nowhere near all of them, but every game I get at least one. I've had multiple in a single game. This playstyle is back, this utility is back, but this alone I've been loving. It's so much fun. There's been so many times where you're just the hero of the team. Like right here in Ark Strider, it's just whirlwind guarding down my entire team, and then I give them the flying tiger knee. So now I'm gonna start getting into some heavy build crafting. And with build crafting, you're gonna lean heavy one way. By doing this, some of your other stats get hit, but with this build, you're not gonna care. It's that lethal. We're gonna be using Top Tree Sunbreaker Code of the Fire Forged. There's some things that you must have to get the basic thing going, but there's also a lot more to add on for even more madness. You can get it going basic, but the full build is even crazier. I've perfected it, so at the end, I'm gonna have a text summary of the things needed and then the perfected version. So the must have, you want 100 strength. It gives the shoulder charge a 35 second cooldown. I'm gonna get back to this. On my helmet, I have an arc so I can use radiant light. That's how I can get more strength. On the arms, stasis, a must have thermoclastic blooming. It's on the artifact. Defeating a combatant with a solar or stasis melee creates an orb of power. Extra, make them stasis for melee kickstart. When your melee is fully expended, you gain melee energy. Must have high energy fire. While charged with light, you deal 20% more damage with your weapon, and a kill takes that charge away. And this one's actually kind of huge. I do encourage you to get it in there. Void stacks on stacks. Gain an extra stack of charge with light for every stack that you gain. The Greaves, extra, but I do recommend that you go void specifically for better already. Your health begins to regenerate immediately after picking up an orb of light. Class item, must have. Taking charge. Picking up an orb gets you charged with light. Extra, make it arc. Double outreach. Reduces melee cooldown when using your class ability. So it's about to get wild. Here are the main parts of the build. 100 strength, thermoclastic blooming, taking charge, high energy fire. You can get this going with that, but for the full build, you want those four things with melee kickstart, stacks on stacks, better already, and two double outreach. This is what is happening. It's very strong. When you shoulder charge an enemy from the air, you're going to one-shot them. It's going to drop an orb because of thermoclastic blooming on a solar subclass. You're going to become charged with light. That orb, if you've taken any damage, the moment that orb is picked up, you're charged with light, better already kicks in to give you health and recovery. If you have stacks on stacks, it's going to give you two charges to just walk around with and then use your high energy fire. After you land this shoulder charge, melee kickstart gives a little bit back. When you pop your barricade, double outreach, giving melee energy. Both of those together, that 35 second timer for shoulder charge gets down to 24 seconds. I tried making the Greaves arc for invigoration. That one gives melee energy when you pick up an orb of light, but it didn't help, it didn't stack. It didn't go faster than 24 seconds, so Void's gonna be really good there because of better already. And it gets more complete because of the tree. After you land the shoulder charge, Tempered Metal goes up. So any mods that you don't have for something like Reload is helped because of this. If allies are close, they get it too. You gain bonus movement and reload speed to use with your two stacks of charge of light. And if two enemies are close, you're gonna shoulder charge one of them, everything around is gonna get deep buffed. It's very good. You've been seeing various weapons. 
I started doing this, I was having an absolute blast. Now, the scary part. Well, first let me tell you this. I have never been this much charged with light in a match, ever. I'm getting 10, 15 plus kills a game with high energy fire final blows. The scary part is that this is pretty easy to get going. Sure, players are gonna take you out, but as you get used to this new distance, it's pretty much seven meters. So many times people shoot their shotgun, get me to mid health, possibly low, but it's really hard to judge, and I'm just flying on in and I complete the shoulder charge. It's gonna take you some games to get that distance going. But now, I'm telling you, you can get them. You can land these shoulder charges like never before. But what's crazy is that after you do the shoulder charge, you get your two stacks of charge with light. If you're fast enough with the weapon that you're using, if that weapon is masterworked, you're gonna get a double with that weapon using your two stacks up, but you're gonna drop another orb. You're gonna go pick that up, you're gonna have two more stacks again. A very lethal loop, and by the time all of that runs out, you're gonna have another shoulder charge ready to go do it again. I was using it all day with various weapons, crazy TTKs. I've had some of them up on the screen. Since you have two charges, you get 20% on the first kill, you can reload, and then have kill clip plus another stack, the final stack of charge with light, and that's gonna go all together. It makes something like a kill clip messenger, a high impact pulse do 57 per bullet, 171 per burst, a four bullet kill. Something like a multi kill clip grid skipper, charge with light and multi kill clip does 34 per crit. It's a rapid fire two burst. So many things, and what's nice, you can use it with literally any weapon in the game. Thorn is great. Lumina is great, a 120 hand cannon, just by itself or with Rampage or Kill Clip. Devil's Ruin, Devil's Ruin does 42 per crit, 31 to the body, it has like a .23 TTK if you land all your headshots. And a bonus, something to remember. I don't really have any good weapons to show you. Any swashbuckler weapon is gonna be the best because the swashbuckler damage does stack with high energy fire. Whereas something like blunt execution rounds on the BXR, it doesn't work with the shoulder charge. There's a lot of trial and error. I went through so many weapons, you've been seeing just a small glimpse and highlights of them, but here are the top five that I have found is the most deadly. Also remember, when you get that shoulder charge and drop that orb, you get one, but so does your teammates. Packs of this build will do really good. But at number five, and could easily have been number one, I've spoken in length about it. I personally don't find it too much fun to use in its current state, the Lorenz Driver. I couldn't not put it on the list. Put it this way. I played only one game with it. One. I went 27-0 undefeated with a Wii Ran. Imagine, you get your shoulder charge off. You're charged with light times two. You then have two body shots locked in. Which, by the way, again Bungie, the body shot damage is a little bit too high on these things. With high energy fire, it deals 199 to the body. So I can wait for the marks, for them to get highlighted red, get the marks, body shot them. And if I'm fast enough, since it's master worked, here's where it's wild. Get the shoulder charge, get charged with light, body shot final blows. If I get a double, drop an orb because Lorenz's master worked, I will pick it up. I'm gonna have two more stacks of charge with light. That's two more body shots. In reality, I could literally never hit a headshot with this thing. The only thing that would stop me is a tier 10 max resilience player. That's a rare player. But I could body shot my entire way all the way to Lagrangian site. And then body shot from there. It's wild. It's strong. I had to include it on the list because of how this build works with it. At number four, Ariana's Vow. Ariana is a similar thing, but funny enough, you have to actually hit a headshot, right? You come out of that shoulder charge, you have two shots of 196 to the head locked in, two one taps. And I wanna stress again, if you're masterworked and you're fast enough, you can just go do it again with the orb that you picked up. It's a wild one because you get to be mobile, then really aggressive right after that shoulder charge. I've had a lot of fun with it, it's very strong. And as I get into the top three here, I had them in different spots. At one point, I had them all ranked as number one. But as I go through, I'm gonna give you my reasoning of why they're there. At number three, the Golden Tricorn Retraced Path. It's a perfect fit. Final blows with this weapon grants bonus damage while the buff is active. Grenade or melee kills of the same damage type greatly increases its damage for a short duration. It deals 17 to the head, it's a 0.73 TTK. And after that first kill, it goes up to 20 per crit. The Tricorn timer is gonna be on the screen. It now has a 0.6 TTK. But if you land a solar ability final blow, let's say something like a solar shoulder charge, it's gonna get you to golden Tricorn times two. It now deals 26 to the head, a 0.43 TTK. But you know what would be even better? Having charge with light, high energy fire on top of that. It deals 31 to the head. That's in that 0 0.36, 0 0.4 TTK deletion range. I mean, look at it. Very strong setup with this build. And what you would do is you get the first kill and then you have seven seconds to run around, find someone to shoulder charge to get Tricorn times two and charge with light. And if you were ever wondering on how to get this perk going, bottom tree golden gun throwing knife is really good but this is way better. It's very fun, very strong. If you do get this roll on this trace rifle, put this build together and just have fun with it. At number two, the Ace of Spades. Ace of Spades is a meta weapon. You can use it all game by itself. 
you can put in a lot of work and not even take the build into account. And that's what's kind of special because you use it normally. There's going to be times where you get a kill, you're going to reload, you're going to be running around with Memento Mori, the damage rounds. But all of a sudden, an enemy is going to come walking right into your shoulder charge lane. When you hit them with it, you get two stacks and now you have two taps in the chamber. 108 to the head. And again, what's so scary about Ace is with the Catalyst, you can chain two taps. Get the shorter charge, get charged with light. 108, two tap, 108, two tap. Get the orb, you're going to be charged again. You saw Memento Mori and just keep slaying out. Along the way, if a super gets in your way or another player, grieves. Important note, I don't have it on my build, but many players do. Powerful friends. When you become charged with light, nearby allies will also become charged with light. So there's a lot of things you can do with this base setup. I had to go with Radiant Light to get my strength stat up. Ace of Spades is so fun. Very aggressive playstyle with it, constantly hunting. But number one, and you have to think, we've had some great weapons, great loadouts, strong weapons and TTKs here. I had these three flipped around at one point, but I settled here at number one, Monte Carlo. With Monte Carlo, you have three things that are going on. First of all, the Monte Carlo method. Dealing damage with this weapon reduces your melee cooldown and grants a chance for a full charge to your melee ability with each kill. Second thing, the Markov Chain, Swashbuckler. This weapon gains increased damage from melee kills and kills with the weapon. Melee final blows grant ammo for this weapon, and the melee final blow gets you to the Markov chain times five. The third thing is all of it together. You have that damage, that Markov swashbuckler damage, plus high energy fire now. It makes the Monte Carlo deal 37 to the head as a 600 RPM auto, a lightning fast 0.5 TTK. And as you're slaying, it's giving you back melee energy on top of the build. Sometimes it's gonna completely reset it. Monte Carlo is great because a 600 auto is, is fine, but adding two damage buffs on top of fueling more shoulder charges, it's too good not to place here. I've had so much fun with it. I hope you tried this build out. It brings back the shoulder charge, top tree hammers. You can use any weapon you want. It's complete. Lots of moving parts that come to fruition by one flying tiger knee. And the base mod setup, it works with all solar subclasses. Same mods, bottom tree gunslinger, top tree dawn, but none of them pop off like this. This one's crazy. And again, a similar build later on in the week. It's same, same, but different. It has a different objective. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. If you're looking for a new controller, I am partnered with Scuff Gaming. Use the link down below and my code COOL at checkout for a discount. Go have some fun with the Thermoclastic Greaves. Thank you for watching. And until the next one, I am Cool Guy.